Tuesday morning, my father came up to give me a hand with the barn as much as he could. Our plan was to try to get everything prepared for concrete for Friday, at least get as far as we could with those preparations in the day. After a little pre-work discussion, we decided that the lowest layer of plywood needed to be on the walls for the flashing to install correctly before the concrete. This meant that we needed to frame out the door and the two windows that go on this wall before we could get things moving with the plywood. We also had to get our bottom flashing board installed along the bottom girt. This will step out the flashing for a finished edge for the metal siding as well as give us a ledger to stand the plywood on as a guide while installing. With those steps done, my dad is staging the plywood along the wall so that I can come back and glue the girts and then staple the plywood up and into place. This bracket's been run over a time or two. I'm gonna have to cut it off and get a bolt down plate. So I just sent my dad into town to see if he can get one located. I'm gonna cut these tabs off and clean it up and get it prepared. We'll get a bolt down base and drill a hole into that footer. And bolt it down with the wedge bolt. <clears throat> Be able to keep going with that. See this other strap is broken halfway back too. Wouldn't have survived getting straightened out. Unfortunately. When I initially set this stuff up, I had planned on having an 18 foot garage door opening. And my lack of planning, I didn't pre-order a door six months ago. But the friend of mine that I helped with his driveway happens to have a used 16 foot door. Um, it's just not insulated and though that's not ideal that would get me dried in for the winter and I'm okay with a 16 foot door so I'm gonna start laying out this wall so that I can get these front posts in place and get the build out for the 16 foot door instead of the 18 foot door he said he'll have the door up here to me in another week or so which just helps <laughs> pays to help out your friends and neighbors. After measuring a couple of times and going back and forth about it, I decided ultimately to leave the door set to the right side of the original opening. That keeps it lined up with the deepest part of the shop so that if I need to bring my dump truck in or anything long like that, it's easiest to get it in straight. My dad showed up from in town with the new post base anchor and I got pretty anxious to get that in and get moving on the other side as well. In doing that I completely forgot to reset my camera and missed getting all of that part installed until this point. This angle brace had to go in a little bit differently than the others. It needed to go up high enough to clear the main entry door that goes into this section of the wall. With all of that in 
and the door framed in. Now we can install the sheeting on the front of the wall to secure this end of the big wall. It was getting kind of late and my dad has an hour and a half drive to get back home. So he went home for the evening and I kept going to try to get as far as I could with what we had to do. With a couple of sheets nailed down, on this end of the wall, that's all secured and good to go. Now I'm moving on to getting the flashing installed along that bottom edge and up the wall. This flashing goes along the top of that ledger board and down the face of it. The concrete here will be even with the top of that ledger board or down maybe a quarter inch roughly. There will be a foam seal strip that goes on the face of this ledger board between it and the concrete and that'll act as a break point as well as a little bit of an expansion joint so that the slab does not press against the building directly. The metal siding stands 7 eighths of an inch out from the face of the wall with the plywood on this ledger board that leaves me one inch step out from the wall surface. That should give me a really nice transition and finished edge to go from the metal siding down to the concrete of the porch. With those steps completed I decided it was time to call it a night and wait for the storm that's supposed to arrive somewhere like four in the morning. Well, the storm came in and sat here all day snowing. We got about three inches of snow and it didn't let up until late into the evening. So this is the following morning, Thursday morning, when I was supposed to be finishing the elevations of the dirt work for the pad. Mother Nature changed my plans. I decided that morning that since the mud was frozen and covered in a snow layer, it would be best to take care of some farm chores that needed to happen, like delivering hay up to the pigs from down below and delivering a pig up from above down to the sows below so they can get ready to be bred.
my little old two-place horse trailer does a pretty good job behind this tractor for moving animals around on this property. Old Oswald had given me a pretty good exercise chasing him around trying to convince him that he needed to get into this trailer. Now that I got him in there, he didn't want to come out very badly either. Once I got the other door open and he saw there was a couple of ladies down here, he didn't mind coming out. So once he was in, the trailer was secured and the gate was secured again, I thought I better keep an eye on him just for the next little bit to make sure how he interacts with the piglets and with the ladies. Anytime I move animals from one pen to another and they haven't been together for a minute, I always like to observe them for a few just to make sure that everybody's going to get along well. With that all done, it was time to go back up, call to cancel the concrete for tomorrow, and then move on to the next task that needed attention. I had noticed when driving down with the trailer, as I looked over the hill, that one of my solar panel arrays had fallen down during the wind and snowstorm from the previous day. So I needed to go down, assess the situation, get the snow off the panels, and see what I could do to get them back into place and standing up again. With the panels cleaned off, I figured all that I would need is a handful of screws and a screw gun, and I should be able to get this thing standing back up and in place like it should be. When I initially set those panels up, I needed a flat space out on that ridge to put them up. So in order to build the flat space, I needed to get there, which meant I had to cut in this road to get over there as I went, and then I could flatten out this space to put the panels on. Just how it goes when you live on the side of a mountain. I think it had been way too many years since I'd done power cleans in the gym, but I guess I'm glad I remembered how to use the technique or something. I just couldn't see any good way of being able to use any type of equipment to assist in this, so my only real option was to bear down and make it happen. I guess now that that's back up, that'll probably make it through another winter that way. 
sure would have liked to get the stands put up this year, but it wasn't in the cards. I spent the rest of that afternoon meeting and sending five puppies home with each of their new owners. The next morning was Friday and it was frozen. There was no concrete coming anymore, but there was a storm on the way for the weekend. We're supposed to have like five to six inches of snow in the next 24 hours. So this morning we're gonna get chains on the tractor, plow blades hooked up, things like that. Chains on the rangers so we can get around. It's supposed to come in this afternoon at like one o'clock and then stay with us for basically three days. And overnight and tomorrow is supposed to really dump a lot of snow. So we're gonna try to get the tractor ready with chains and plow. I know his plow truck isn't ready yet, so he usually hits the road for everybody. He hits it and then I go back with my tractor and push it off the road a little farther a day or two after um, just to help keep it opened up. But I know he's a ways out from having a plow truck ready, so I'm going to take with my tractor and the plow and be able to make sure I keep the road opened up for us in this next little bit of storm and stuff so we're gonna get after it need to watch this side rail make sure there's no twist because sometimes they'll twist inside of the link section mm -hmm. so we just have to follow this side rail make sure that the links alternate evenly and don't have a twist in them.
this little front hitch attachment that I made for this tractor sure is handy when it comes to moving around the trailers, especially these gooseneck trailers. I wanted this horse trailer up and out of the way, so I brought it here to the well pad. That way I had more room when it comes to pushing snow this winter. Wasn't able to get the other tire chain on the front of the tractor because when we laid it out we found that the one side rail link was broken and missing and so the, the cross link and hook was missing and that one link so it's kind of broken on the one side halfway through so we had to go into town and pick up groceries a few things and so I just got some of these I don't know what you call them, quick links, full circle link with a threaded nut. <clears throat> they work awful good. So we're going to put that back together, put it on here. And then I also had to go in and pick up my hydraulic filter. Um, as it's coming up late into this fall, I noticed that my hydraulics are getting slow and they're chirping a little bit and having a hard time. And I think my filter's finally getting plugged up enough that it's starting to cause the cavitation. The, I've gotten several of these different attachments, hydraulic attachments for this machine in the last year or two and so there's been a lot of a lot of cross connections and stuff and every time you do that there's always a potential for some cross contamination of the fluid at least initially so I'm sure it's probably that. There may have been a little bit of moisture that's gotten into the filter too, so <clears throat> gonna change the filter, put that tire chain on, and then we should be good to go for this storm. From in town to up here at our place, we're almost a thousand feet, about seven hundred feet or so, I think, to my driveway entrance. Seven hundred feet elevation difference than in town. And we were just in town and it's all the streets are clear, all the sidewalks are clear, there's not a bit of snow anywhere, and nothing's hitting the ground up there. We get up here, and in fact, about a mile down the road from me, there's no snow on the ground, 
but as soon as you get just a little bit farther up the road it starts dusting the road and then obviously it's starting to dust up here on the hill now for my driveway entrance to the barn pad here is almost is just over 250 feet in elevation just in that road so we have quite a climate spectrum up here i guess you could say well it was a real busy week up here on the mountain we got a lot of things accomplished we changed our plans many times but ultimately we're moving forward and making good progress on our goals thank you to all of you for taking the time to share in our journey along the way